Perkins, the Hall of Famer Michael Wilbon. You stuck with us for a lot of hours. I know, many, <laughs> many hours today. I'm Malika Andrews. We, we've got some special guests stopping by too. Tracy Morgan, he's going to be joining the show. Zach Lowe is going to be beaming in. But we're going to start in Denver. The Nuggets, they begin their quest to repeat tomorrow. And when you look at their path, that is in front of them right now, Michael Wilbon, what will their biggest obstacle be? The schedule, <laughs> the West, having to go through three of those teams. Malika, that's going to be really difficult. Um, more difficult, I think, than last year. Uh, the Lakers ought to be a more difficult out, much more difficult than they were a year ago. Sure. And whoever's on deck after that and after that. So so I don't think this is a – is it a fait accompli? Uh, Let's not, let's not go there. I think the Denver Nuggets start the playoffs as the best team in all of basketball, higher than the Celtics on my, on my list. But it can wear you out by the time you get to the third of those Western Conference opponents. Yep. Uh, whoever you have to go through next even can take you out. So I just think the schedule uh, alone is going to work against them, this sort of uh, – you got to slog through three really difficult opponents that seem properly motivated, the personnel to upset you, mm -hmm. right? And then your own situation. Are you going to remain healthy? Nobody's going to twist an ankle on Denver's team? And we've seen that already in these, in these play-in games. So what is Denver facing in terms of just the opponents? It's a, it's a murderer's row, if you will. Mm. I agree with you a thousand percent on everything you said and a little bit more. Or they're going to get complacent, right? Like, when you think about making that first run or winning the NBA championship, the hunger, the desire is there, right? Like, the sure. sense of urgency. Right. Are they going to get comfortable, the Denver Nuggets? Like, do they want it that bad? It's going to be harder for them this season. And Wilborn just talked about how deep the Western Conference is, right? Others are going to have to – how great the Western Conference is, excuse me – Others are going to have to step up, right? We think about how valuable Bruce Brown was on that team. Jeff Green, Uncle Jeff as they call him. Yeah. Is Christian Brown going to take that leap? Is Reggie Jackson going to be reliable? Aiden Watts. It, right. Is, is, is Michael Porter Jr., is he going to elevate his game and be able to match the energy of some of these teams that actually have a third star? Those are the questions. Is the Denver Nuggets the best team in the Western Conference? Yes, but it's not by a large margin. They are the favorites in the West. They've been the favorites in the West. The field is harder. Mm. The bench, a little less proven, a little helter-skelter. Those are real things. This is going to be a harder path than it was last year, starting with the Lakers team that has found a real offense, an effective offense for the first time in two or three years. And I think they can hang in these games a little better than they did last year because they can score now. But one thing I'm not worried about with the Denver Nuggets, sorry to disagree with you on a Friday, Perk. I'm not worried about complacency with this group. I think this group is hungry. I think they know from the top of the organization to the 15th guy on the bench, they have an all-time special player in Nikola Jokic and a very finite chance here to do something special with him in his prime. Jamal Murray hasn't been complacent for one second of his entire freaking life. Neither is Michael Malone. I think these guys are coming in with the mindset of last year was last year. We're not satisfied. We want to do something special here that people in Denver and people around the NBA will remember forever. And the only way to do that is multiple championships. And the best way to do that is to do something no team has done since the Durant Warriors, and that's win two in a row. I think the hunger is there, but so is the competition. Now, now Zach, it is a, two difference, right? It's a difference. They could be hungry. I'm, you know, we all get hungry at times. <laughs> but are they starving? That's the thing, right? Last year, they were starving for a championship. I'm not questioning whether or not they have the hunger. Are they starving, right? Would they? Are they willing to go out there and right. they? Or, or, like, is their mindset saying, "Forget what we did last year. Let's approach this like we don't have a championship." And that's what I'm saying. When you get in the locker room, sometimes it like those loose balls that you were diving on the floor for last year, 
Sometimes, you know, you might not do it this year. Like, this is a real thing. I just want to reiterate what, what Zach and Michael Wilbon were saying, that we, a graphic that we pulled up, if we could pull that back up for one second, Director Kathy, thank you so very much, because the 2022, or 2023, rather, Suns, win-wise, were the best team that the Denver Nuggets faced with 45 wins. The Lakers in the first round this season, looking at potentially what their path could be, already have two more wins in the first round than the Nuggets, than the Suns did in the second round last year. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the tide rising and all these teams getting better. And the back-to-back -back path, really, for the Nuggets, it starts with the Lakers and LeBron James. He spoke, right, about this matchup with Denver yesterday. I think you put a little bit too much more emphasis on it. Um, this is our first round matchup. And we, I mean, we look forward to the postseason, but I haven't been like looking forward to the rematch. It shouldn't be personal at all. Um, I think you, know, you, allow, you allow yourself to get away from the game plan when you make it too personal. It's been in the postseason way too long in my career to know that you don't get too high off of game one and get too high over Whoever the matchup is, you gotta just stay even killed. So the Nuggets, they've won eight straight against the Lakers, including that Western final sweep. But three of those four games, they were within six points. That's why we call it one of the most competitive sweeps ever. The Lakers have a tough hill to climb, though. So when you're looking at the series, Wilbon, what is the matchup that you're most focused on? It's, it's Jokic versus the world. I mean, what are you going to do against him? What is your philosophy in dealing with Jokic? We, we, we thought every time we see a game, and something works for that game, we then decide, okay, this is the way that team should attack him. So we've seen Jokic as a scorer, and a couple of games here and there, it didn't work as well. Oh, Jokic had 45 and he's still lost. All right, is that going to be a philosophy that Darvin Ham embraces? I don't know that it's a person. This, this, this is going to sound cliche, Malika, but th that team has to figure out a way to battle him for as many as seven games. Right. And whatever that takes. There may be some, Perk knows about this, having done it literally at that position. Perk, how many times are there situations where you don't even go in and that's one of your top three things, but your coach, your staff, a senior player on that team will get to something that's a plan F, that's not even a plan B. I think that is going mm -hmm. to be necessary for the Lakers against the Nuggets. And you know what? That's a great point because I remember when we were playing the Cleveland Cavaliers when I was with the Boston Celtics, and Doc came into the film room and he started the film room. He said, KG, in order for us to win this series, you're going to have to be aggressive. So aggressive, I need you to get uncomfortable. 20 to 25 field goal attempts and we're going to win this series. So I'm looking at AD. Like, LeBron talking about don't take it personal. They're not taking it personal. Why not? Malika, you know when I was growing up in Beaumont, Texas, and you used to get in a fight, and you'll get whooped. You want to see that guy again. You want to go fight him again, and you still get whooped. It's personal. I'm going to keep lining it up until I eventually get to know you and you smell my cologne. Yes, it's personal. <laughs> they haven't beaten this team in two years almost. So I'm looking at Anthony Davis. That's the matchup. He's in his prime. Anthony Marshawn Davis, he's been available all year. He's an all-NBA caliber player. He has to go out there and shine like new money. If he does that, then we could be watching the upset. Remember, it's Joker. It was still not played with an All-Star, right? Joker's never played with an All-Star. Well, Jamal Murray's not been an All-Star yet. Yeah, that's right, which is insane. But, but nonetheless, the Lakers start this series with two guys who expect to be, I know I can look at my own ballot, all-NBA when these ballots are counted. Two. Right? LeBron and Anthony Davis. Both those guys are going to be somewhere on second and third team. So the, the Lakers, they have to figure they have up. They can't look at this in, across the ring and see an opponent with more. I, I, don't, I don't see that at all. The Lakers shouldn't be using any of that. They just can't be looking too far in the rearview mirror because of all this history that all of a sudden starts to feel really big and there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. Zach, what are you keying in on in this matchup? Well, the Nuggets do have more, and the reason they have more is they have the best player in the world, the ultimate problem solver, a riddle for which no team and no defense has found a solution that lasts more than three or four possessions at a time, and that's Nikola Jokic, and they have a team that fits perfectly around him. But you know it's serious. You know it's playoff time when Perk starts using people's middle names. Anthony <laughs> Marshawn Davis is going to have to have, have the defensive series of his life for the Lakers to have any chance, and paradoxically, that might not mean guarding Nikola Jokic because Nikola 
puts him in the basket. It might be, as we see on some of these clips, as the lurker mm. on Aaron Gordon, but really on nobody and everybody at once, wreaking havoc around the lane. And look, you're going to have to mix it up. You can't play Rui Hachimura or LeBron on Nikola Jokic over and over and over again. You can't show him the same look. But Anthony Davis has been better against the Nuggets as a roving help defender than he has been trying to guard Jokic one-on-one. -on -one. He's just not big enough, and when he's on Jokic, they have nobody behind the play that scares anybody with the Nuggets. It's going to be a mix of a lot of different things, but look for a lot of that setup from the Lakers. Rui Hachimura on Jokic. We saw LeBron guard him a little bit in last year's playoffs. He can't do it a lot, and he did it quite well when he did it. Look for them to move Anthony Davis around. He's got to be the best defensive player in this series by a mile hmm. for the Lakers to have any chance. And it's a tall task and yeah. ain't nobody figured it out yet. I was going to say that's a Rubik's Cube called slowing down Nikola Jokic. Slowing down everyone else and making Nikola Jokic beat you, sure. But slowing down Nikola Jokic is such a tall task. Wilbon, I'm hoping we can pull the curtain back from some pre-show discussions here because you had a really interesting point. You watched Michael Jordan play. You watched him take on the greats. And you made an interesting... Uh, analogy as to what could be on the line, what LeBron James could prove in this series if he can push the Nuggets. Well, he is, and let me start with, he has indeed proven everything. I mean, that's why LeBron James is on most people's, I mean, anybody's Mount Rushmore or basketball greats, whether you argue that Jordan is greater or Bill Russell or Kareem or Kobe, whatever. But LeBron wants us, he tells us, he's the GOAT. We've seen all kinds of video clips. In this game, I became the GOAT. If you're the GOAT, don't tell me, as my favorite English teacher, Jim Wall, once said to me as a freshman <laughs> in high school, don't tell me, show me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Show me. This is a chance to show it again. This is a chance. You, you, you tell us this. You want us to know this. All of the, the, the supporters and all the army, legitimate, deserved army of LeBron James devotees who think he's the GOAT, then show me now. And, and by the way, I don't even mean that they have to win this series. Sweep is not even on the on the menu. But this these six or seven games push them. Make push Joker and Michael Malone to the brink here. LeBron James has that. He's the best to me actively and maybe one of the and one of the best ever, no doubt. At diagnosing what is needed from game to game, yes. half to half, quarter yep. to quarter, possession to possession. That's LeBron's superpower to me. All right. Let's see it against the champs. Now, game one. Let's, let's see you make them uncomfortable. Go out and steal game one. They've had a couple of days of rest. Right. So I, wanna, I don't want to hear any more GOAT discussion. I just want to see evidence of it. And LeBron's up to that. LeBron can do that. I want to see it. Mm. And it begins in game one, which is tomorrow on ABC. It would go such a long way if the Lakers were able to somehow nab that first game in the Mile High City. So we talked about the biggest... Hey, what's up, guys? Jag from Jaggy Sports here. Let's talk about the Lakers versus the Nuggets. Nuggets have beaten the Lakers eight straight times, and Mike Malone, the head coach of the Denver Nuggets, is not backing down from his comments, basically saying, yeah, I'd be mad too, yada, yada, yada. Lakers, we beat them ten, uh, sorry, eight games in a row. Um... If you recall, in the parade last year, he called them Denver Nuggets or the Lakers' daddy. Now, he's obviously trash-talking big time. They swept him last year, and can they do the same this year? We don't know, but is there an answer to the Joker? Is there an answer to the Joker? Can anybody stop this guy? You have to double team him. Every way you look, you have to double team him. But, you know, can you actually pull this off? Because Joker is freaking unbelievable. And without Anthony Davis, Lakers are a terrible defensive team. Terrible defensive team. And to be honest, even when LeBron James is playing versus when LeBron James is not playing is quite the difference. So, you know, I know you got all these young guys, but you're facing the reigning champions. 
and this is no walk in the park defending champions denver nuggets are going to take it to the limit they've been waiting for this and come game one we're going to find out if the lakers did their homework <laughs> or if the lakers are going to get swept yet again you know leave a comment in the comment section tell me what you guys think who is going to win this matchup is it the lakers lebron james anthony davis d'angelo russell or is it going to be the denver nuggets joker jamal murray michael porter jr aaron gordon kcp we don't know right who is going to win this matchup anybody's ball game i get it but quite frankly everybody knows denver nuggets are the favorites to win this matchup so that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying leave a comment in the comment section and tell me who you guys think is gonna win is it the denver nuggets or is it the la lakers leave a comment in the comment section jag maggot